Hey everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I sketch a street in Italy with ink and watercolor. So the paper that I'll be using is 100% cotton watercolor paper from Bao Hong and it has quite a rough texture but I thought that it would be suitable for the street scene because the street and buildings have lots of texture to it. So the street scene that I'm going to be sketching today is based on this reference photo from Unsplash and it's a place called Ferrara, Italy. It's an old city in Italy which is more calm and less crowded than cities like Venice or Rome. So I really scrolled through many photos of Italy and I settled on this one because I found a few of these elements really attractive such as like the bike and the bushes and um, I thought it would be very interesting as a sketch. So now I'm sort of analyzing the picture and to simplify, I'm imagining all these lines on these buildings. They are converging towards a point that is on the horizon line, which is at your eye level. So it's good to keep that in mind when you're sketching. So now I'm starting with the rough pencil sketch. And first, I estimate the ground level then the height of the roofs and the buildings on the left and the right. At first glance, you might think this scene is quite complicated, but actually, to me, the main shapes are quite simple. Then it's after you've done the main shapes, it's mostly about getting the perspective and the details in. As you can see, at this stage, I felt that everything was a bit too low down on the paper. So I used an art eraser to rub out some lines and I drew everything a bit higher. So you want to make sure the composition and main shapes are correct during this pencil sketch stage. So you won't have to worry about it down the line. As you can see, I drew the buildings that are further away in smaller and smaller dimensions so that contributes to that sense of perspective and next I sketched out the bike in the foreground. So after most of the structures and shapes are down on the paper, I then start to draw outlines with waterproof ink. So I'm using a Lamy Safari fountain pen with a medium nib. For this piece, I'm also using a Micron pen and it just gives me more variation in line width. Just like the pencil stage, I sketch the main buildings first, followed by the buildings in the distance. I put less detail and try to thin out the lines a bit as it gets further away so that the viewers will tend to focus on the more important areas in the front which have more details and more defined lines. Mm -hmm. 
There are quite a lot of details in the photo, but you don't have to draw every single thing, especially like all the bricks and all the cobblestones on the floor, every window. To me, that complicates the sketch a lot, so I try to simplify as much as I can, although I do actually enjoy drawing all these little details. It's actually quite therapeutic and I like to just enjoy the time looking at one object and just trying to get it right. So if you feel that it's too much, you can always simplify if you like and don't be stressed out about it. It's, um, you can always simplify these kind of sketches. For the plants, I decided that I wanted them to be softer, so I didn't outline them very much, just a few strokes. So if I had had less time to do this sketch, I would definitely have simplified it much more. But because I did this at home and I wanted it to be as perfect as possible. So I added so many details and um, if I had less time, I probably would have sketched it in a much looser style and with much less details. So here I'm adding some brick-like details to suggest a brick wall in the center bridge structure as well as on the left side. So you notice here that the bricks look like they are also converging to a point as well which helps with the perspective and I was thinking of omitting the bike in the front here at first because I didn't want it to be distracting at the front but I think it does sort of guide the viewers eye into this drawing so the reference picture it actually has great composition so I'm following it really quite quite a lot and I think this photographer is just phenomenal so thank you for the photo on Unsplash So I think the lamps are an important element and drawing the lamps progressively smaller as it gets further away is a great way to add depth as well. Here I'm rubbing out the pencil marks using an art eraser. So let's get to color mixing. First. I'm using this uh, hooker screen from Holbein and I'm using it straight from the tube simply because uh, I think it's, it'll be faster. And the second color there was burnt sienna and that is John Brilliant number no. one and yellow ochre. So now I'm mixing the yellow ochre and hooker screen together to create a duller version of the hooker screen. However, I think it's still too saturated, so I added more yellow ochre to dull it down. And then after that, I used John Brilliant number no. one and yellow ochre to create this color right here. And finally, I used pure burnt sienna. For the first layer, I'm doing a wet on wet technique and I'm wetting the surface first with clean water. So you have to make sure that it looks glossy like that. And then I'm coming in with all the colors that I've already mixed.
Here I'm using ultramarine to kind of dull down the burnt sienna to create a more um, darker brown that will be on the floor as well as uh, to add to some of the shadows. This color is actually a mixture of vermilion and the mixture that we mixed earlier of Jean Brillion No. 1 and yellow ochre. So it creates this sort of pinkish, orangey color that uh, I used for the flowers and to add a little bit of red to the piece. Okay, so right now the first layer is mostly dried and you can wait for it to dry or use a blow dryer to dry it down. So I usually take a break and let it dry before I start on the second layer. But this paper does dry slower so right now it's a little bit damp. I am painting with the same burnt sienna and ultramarine mix and whilst I paint, I try to leave some spots unpainted so it looks like highlights or I add more paint to some areas to give it more um, saturation and to give it more variation. Next, I paint the bushes and I'm using the same green as before but I noticed that it was a little bit too cold, the green is too cold, so I added more light red to the green and so now you can see that the green has become a bit warmer and you may also notice that the bushes in the foreground in the front, they are, um, they have, they look bigger, they look like bigger leaves and bigger bushes in, I'm using bigger strokes, whilst the bushes that are further away have smaller strokes, so it gives that illusion of distance and depth. This part is a little bit tricky because in order to preserve the light green color of the bushes, you have to be really careful to paint this dark brown around the greens. So you have to shape each of the leaves around the bushes to preserve all that light in the green. Yeah, so if you paint over it, if you paint too fast, you might not get um, you might not preserve that light green it might be hard to get that back if you do that Next, I'm adding some blue to the painting using cerulean blue. I'm adding it mostly to the windows and the lamps as well as to the guy's coat. Next, I'm painting with a darker blue, which is a mixture of ultramarine and burnt umber. Sometimes I use a little bit of burnt sienna and you can see that it's a very dark blue. And usually I will use this for, um, in, after this I will use it for like shadows. And you can see that I'm using it also for the guys um, trousers and also for like the bike
So at this point, I decided that this piece needed some saturated color. So I added a lot of yellow. And uh, after I did it, I kind of felt like it was too yellow. But later on, I will try and correct that. Uh, so you, you can see how I do it later. So you can see that I added some bricks to the center bridge structure and I used all the colors that we've already been using and I just kind of mixed it up a bit. I didn't paint all the bricks and fill up the whole place. I just left that spot in the top right there to let it look like it's a highlight. And I kind of like how that looks. If you like to fill up the whole, you know, wall, that's fine too. But I kind of like how this looks, so. As you can see, now I'm adding in the shadows with the color that I mentioned before, which is a very dark blue. So now I'm at the fun part, so I'm using Ultramarine plus um, Cerulean Blue to do these splatters of paint on the left and the top and it's, I think it's a nice touch, it gives it just that extra something, you know? If you want to give it a little more extra something, you definitely have to add highlights. So I like to use white gouache to, um, to lighten up some of these parts, especially at that area there where I, where I struggled to preserve the white, to preserve um, the lighter colors. So I think it's pretty much done, but what bothers me is that these areas on the left and right, they are kind of too yellow and I want to adjust that by um, applying a glaze of this orangey color and I got this orange color by mixing light red and yellow ochre. So you can see that this orange kind of dulls down the colors a little bit and I think that makes it look a bit more balanced. To me the floor looked kind of plain so I decided to pull some of those colors down into the ground to create these sort of reflections and I know it looks kind of like it's a wet floor and it's been a rainy day and but I still like how it looks so I just decided to do that and well I I actually like how it turned out And it's done! If you found this video helpful to you, do remember to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you here and I'll see you in the next one.